You know, I have friends who haven't worked in five years. I know of families who survive on food stamps. We need work. I have a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and one on the way. And they're going to have jobs when they get older, right here in Pennsylvania. If Corey O'Brien can bring back trust by instituting a code of ethics his first day as county commissioner and balance the budget without raising taxes or cutting services, he can bring back jobs and hope as congressman. I'm Corey O'Brien, and I approve this ad. Um, by all accounts, it looks like the GOP will be looking to to uh, um, 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 nationalize these elections as often as possible. What's what's the the uh, benefit of uh, of uh, doing that? Well, there's there's a there's a benefit, but there's a tremendous danger of doing that. As, you know, Tip O'Neill says in the phrase that we all use over and over again: "All politics is local, and congressional races are like that too." And when you take a a, a congressional race that's a snapshot of America in a given geographic place, and you try to nationalize it, it, it runs the risk of, of backfire because there are local issues and local concerns that overall, at the end of the day, are going to take precedent over uh, the, big, the big picture issues. And the, the, the danger that I see of this comes in, there was a poll out last Thursday, uh, CBS News, uh, New York Times poll, 62% of those polled said, that the Democrats and Barack Obama are the ones trying to work with the Republicans, and 62% in a, in a separate ask of the question said the Republicans aren't trying to do the same. And the, the challenge for, for our guys is to try to reverse that, that trend. 62% of the public seeing us as the party that's not working to, to get things done is not going to sustain us through November. So, I mean, you've you've been speaking uh, about about a local and and, a, and a national issues right. in your campaign. That's something I, I've I've seen. Where's the where's the right balance to to uh, strike there? Well, I think you know uh, it doesn't matter where you live. You need a job. So uh, jobs uh, jobs is a, a national issue. I'm sure, it's a local issue also. So if you can talk about the things that are uh, important for job creation in your area. <laughs> Uh, like things like investing in the in the infrastructure, and I think one of the one of the, uh, the you know and it's a problem with our politics today that the debate about deficit reduction uh, versus job creation, uh, a lot of times they, they they decide that we can't invest in anything because until we reduce the deficit. And, and Steve knows better than I do. He ran a business. You don't you don't stop investing in the things that are going to keep you productive and keep, keep creating things while at the same time paying down your debt. And I think that, that there are plenty of local issues. I happen to have a, a, a district, or trying to represent a district uh, that's very close to the airport, so they're impacted directly by transportation issues. So talking about the transformation of our transportation system, the fact that you're not going to have a first-rate economy if you don't have a first-rate transportation system. Talking about investing in that, talking about the jobs that come from investing in things like high-speed rail and uh, green, green energy and, and uh, the jobs that come from that. Uh, we have to be on offense and forward thinking. We can't, we can't sort of hide under the covers when it comes to the challenges in front of us, the, the economic challenges. And I think that that's something that resonates both nationally and locally. The other thing is that we're a nation of contrarians. I mean, I think you, you saw in uh, Massachusetts, we didn't start a revolution against the, 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 uh, the crown in England uh, because we were uh, you know, pacifists that go along with things. We're a nation of contrarians. Don't tell us who to vote for. I know that's the attitude in the Senate district. Don't tell us we're going to vote on a Republican or Democrat. We're going to vote for the person we think is going to represent our interests. Uh, I mean, are you more interested in talking about 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 federal spending or 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 certain uh, uh, um, 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 business headquarters in in Chester County? Well, I think it's hard not to talk about the national issues when forty three percent. 43% of our economy is running through Washington, D.C. I mean, that, that is the percentage of the budget that is GDP. Um, and I think Americans are, are concerned. They, they realize that that's a bad model. The problem is, as you centralize decision-making and power in Washington, we're seeing a process over the last decade where we've transitioned 
where you're no longer making decisions based on merit, they're based on politics. Okay? As you drive that decision making up, lobbyists have more control, special interests have more control, and ordinary Americans are losing that control. And that's why I think it's both parties right now. People are upset with both parties. Both parties have participated in that process, which has driven power to Washington and taken it away from our <coughs> communities. And going back, I, I don't think the, the question of jobs versus, um, versus uh, stimulus, or, or excuse me, deficit, is a, is a false choice. Um, there's strong evidence that long-term, a government has to live within relative means. I mean, if it goes, if it has a GDP of over 3% or a spending of over 3% of GDP a deficit, that may be maintainable. But right now, we're running over 10%. And that is destroying jobs in this country because, again, as somebody that's had a business and has had to make decisions, I, would, I look at this business climate and it is a bad business climate because we know that taxes are going to go up on businesses. And we already have an uncompetitive tax rate in this state and in this country. So I think you have to get the deficit under control and at least be able to show a path forward to a deficit that's under control to stimulate job creation. It's just not going to happen any other way. <coughs>